Hey there folks, welcome back. A few quick words about the Constitution, and fair warning, you might be butthurt just a little bit, but I tend to do that a lot on this channel. I seem to offend a lot of people, and they leave me the dumbest comments you can imagine. And this conversation comes from a previous conversation that I had a couple of weeks back where I'm talking about oath-taking. And I make the point that oath-taking really doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. The, the oath is no better than the person who made the oath, basically. And I, I discussed that, and there was a couple of people butthurt about that too, but that's too bad. Sorry I've been away. I've been very busy, actually. But we'll go ahead and we'll get into the meat of this, the Constitution, and why it doesn't mean as much as you think it does. This is along with oath-taking, because people throw that out all the time. Oh, they took an oath, and they owe this and that. And I'm like, yeah, good luck. Same thing with the Constitution. Everybody's always like, the Constitution says this, and the Constitution says that, and they can't do this because of the Constitution, because of the Constitution, and so the hell what? The Constitution is a piece of paper, folks. And like I said, just people are going to get upset, but just follow me along and listen to the logic of this, because that's what I do, and this is really why people get upset. Take the emotion out of it. Take your feelings out of it. Yeah, of course. The Constitution should mean something, and the rules that are in it should be adhered to. But take your feelings out of it and approach this logically and think about it. There are two components to the way that the government runs things, basically, that keeps the Constitution from meaning anything. It's hardly worth the paper it's written on because of these two things. Component number one. As I pointed out, the Constitution is a piece of paper. It's on a piece of paper, right? It's a document, and all it takes is another piece of paper to override it. Simple as that. Let's take Chicago as an example. Is it unconstitutional for Chicago, for the government, the governing authorities in Illinois and in Chicago to tell you that you cannot have a firearm? Bring a gun in Chicago and see what happens. Let it be known that you have firearms in city limits in Chicago and see how that goes down. <laughs> Even with a license, you, you really can't. Because Illinois has some of the strictest regulations you can think of. The fact that there are even regulations and licenses and tests and all these hoops you got to jump through. A violation of your Second Amendment rights. Correct? But it's enforced all over the country. Everybody, oh, well, yeah, I'm... Uh, the, my constitutional rights to uh, own and carry a firearm are being upheld because I have a license. That license nullifies your rights. Because you shouldn't need a license to prove that you have a right to have it. Constitution says you do, right? But what happened? A lawmaker wrote something different and signed it and... Tough. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. It's all over. Same thing with your constitutional rights to free speech. I get that right trampled on YouTube all the time. YouTube doesn't want me to say what I have to say, and they got these little AI bots whose job it is to transcript everything that's being said and pick it apart. And then what? I have a right to say what I want, and you have a right to listen to it if you want to. Not according to YouTube, not according to Google, not according to Facebook or Twitter or any of these other systems. And they can cut you off. And, oh, that's hate speech. And call it whatever they want because someone wrote up a rule and signed it off. And your constitutional rights mean nothing. Basically. Second component. And this is the big one. Bigger than Star Wars. Who remembers Star Who's a big fan of Star Wars? I saw it in theaters. I saw the first film in the theaters when I was a kid. Number two, no one enforces it. No one enforces it. You think these lawmakers don't know that they're circumventing the Constitution when they make up a rule or a law? They know damn right well what they're doing. Do you think the uh, when it goes to appeal, when people get upset about it and they take it a step higher because you have to go above that lawmaker to get it rescinded, correct? Do you think that person doesn't know? They're playing a game. Oh, well, whether or not they accept it or deny it, 
And even if they say, okay, yeah, that's unconstitutional, so-and-so, you need to stop doing that, it's already been done, even temporarily, and it's going to have a time period by which you have to wait for it to be overturned, correct? A precedence has already been set. So as long as no one is willing to take a stand for the Constitution, who is in a position of any type of legal or lawmaking authority, it doesn't matter. You can complain about it all you want. You're nobody. I'm nobody. Me too. I'm nobody. The American citizens, we're numbers. We're numbers. We get a social security card to prove it. Even non-citizens are numbers because they are counted too. They're all counted. You're all on the census. You want to protest about it? Good luck. Protesting doesn't work. Protesting doesn't work unless the outcome of that protesting will benefit some other agenda that we're probably not even aware of. If that protest ultimately is going to fit a goal that meets the requirements of the government or some other agency, they will allow it to mean something. Otherwise, you're spinning your wheels. And I brought this up before. Everybody protested the Vietnam War. <laughs> and they, most people, I can't say everybody, that's not fair, but the, the majority of Americans were dead set against it. When did the war stop? When the government got tired of dealing with it. Not because of the protests. Those didn't mean anything. It doesn't mean a damn thing unless they allow it to mean something. Stand up for your rights. You should be allowed to stand up for your rights, but theoretically speaking, you don't really have any. What you have is a bunch of privileges, and those privileges can be taken away at any time. They can pluck it right out from under you because everything is bought and paid for. You don't really own anything. You don't really have a right to do anything that isn't granted to you, despite the Constitution. They could take away your driver's license, your car, your bank accounts, your home, your property, your freedom, your life. They can take it away, even though technically it's all yours and you have a right to it, correct? I mean, and true enough, I mean, if enough people resisted, change could be forced. But if we're being realistic, most people are either too brainwashed or too afraid to take a stand to fight the system. They don't want to be the one. They don't want to be the one to take the first hit. You know, I, I think about that. Um, I think it was a Seagal film, actually. And he had like these seven or eight people in a line. And he was, I guess, arresting them. I don't remember the film too well, so I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but you get the point. And the one guy says, you can't stop all of us. And his response is which one of you will be first because he had a gun yeah which one is going to be first nobody is uh, willing to be first there's very few people with that kind of courage historically speaking not just right now right now it's worse i think people are more cowardly now than they have ever been ever been and folks this is not just an america problem this is global this is every government every country Okay, you don't really have rights, you have privileges, you're not really free. I know that's a, that's a bit over most people's heads. I think that a lot of the people who routinely watch this channel kind of get where I'm coming from. You know, they know what I'm talking about. But the Constitution, it doesn't mean what you think it does. It should mean something. It was meant to mean something, but it's been circumnavigated so much uh, and hasn't been taught most kids coming out of school they don't even really know what it is or what it means they can't define it they don't understand it there's no civics being taught in high school anymore <laughs> it used to be a requirement now it doesn't matter who's honking somebody's around here i'm going to check that out in a minute anyways any thoughts Please feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you get where I'm coming from, even if it hurts your feelings. Um, if you understand what I'm talking about, if you have any comments about it, of course, like I said, post your thoughts down below. Please do um, subscribe, check out some of the other videos, all that good stuff. If you want to help the channel out, hey, I need all the help I can get. 
There are links for that down below, and I really do appreciate it, seriously. And what more can I say, but stay tuned, folks, because there is more to come.